Hi guys, what's up? Jorg Reiners from Sharp 11 Music here. Um, it's been quite a while since I did a lick of the week, but that's because we've been busy with building a website, a membership website with saxophone lessons on it. And finally, after a year, a live stream gig with our own Sharp 11 electric band, which is here on the channel, by the way, the complete concert if you're interested. But let's do a lick of the week because this week I posted a transcription on Cannibal Adderley's Stars Fell on Alabama, which is really one of my favorite jazz ballads. Um, it's amazing how complete Cannibal shows himself as a player. He not only plays beautiful in the melody, how he interprets everything, um, but also his... Um, expressiveness, of course, his fast harp bop -ish lines, but also his blues roots, which is really apparent in this, and how he dynamically plays with phrasing. So it's a superb, complete solo with great lines as well. Um, I can rant on forever about this solo, but we will take one of the best things, according to me, from the solo, which is the solo pickup. The solo pickup is insane. It's just so, so nice. So let's, let's listen to it together and then I'll tell you what's so nice about it. <laughs> Let's listen to that just once again, to let it sink in a bit, just listen to how it feels. For me, it just always felt so nice going into this solo by, by just this line. <laughs> Okay, so now we've heard it twice. The first thing that is very apparent is that it's kind of a very laid back-ish line. It's a long line into the solo and it carries over actually to the second bar of, um, of the solo where we get a resolution. But first let's talk about the timing a bit because um, if you would have asked me before I transcribed it and just when I enjoyed music, sometimes I do that too, um, then I would have said like it's because it's so nice how he plays it laid back and then yeah he, he falls behind and then he kind of accelerates, comes back into the tempo, he's so flexible moving backwards, forwards, but if we dive in a bit deeper, it's actually not really totally what is happening. It's happening a bit, but what makes it laid back is his phrasing. So let's take a look at how he articulates this line. Take a closer look at especially the second note in that uh, pickup bar, the E flat and D, because he puts a little stretch on that. And then a little bit later, we have that also on the A and A, a flat. And there he really stretches on the A. He keeps that one a little bit longer, you know, to, to get into that laid back-ishness, if that's a word. Let's, let's listen to that once again and, and pay attention to these two places. <laughs> Especially on the A, it's like for a moment like he freezes in time and then he comes down again. So that's a very interesting place and so I made a few notes in the uh, articulation there. So that's very important. But the second thing to notice which creates this uh, laid back feeling is that he articulates a lot of the notes. Like he puts a thong against almost every note. So not the uh, aforementioned two slurred notes where he sits a little bit on, but all the other notes pretty much of the line, he puts a thong. And at the end, uh, there he has a little bit uh, less thong, but Listen to that, it makes it all way more in your face. <laughs> so 
So that creates that laid back feeling and it's just beautiful, I think. That's that's one big part that that you should absorb in this line. And if I study Cannonball, I like his lines, but even more than his lines, I like all this, the nuances he uses in his lines and how he articulates. And this is a big, big part of Cannonball, that Cannonball sound, that he will go into eight note lines where he kind of pushes every note with his tongue, with do, 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 do. Really he puts a lot of effort on that's probably the hard bop part, but it's really the, the cannonball part. Um, I don't know, a player probably? Yeah, you'll correct me in the comments, that's all okay, but that is so devoted and so nuanced and has so many options in the way he articulates, because he also, not in this segment, but he uses uh, those those really short staccatos and and yeah, he, he uses a lot of like cross rhythms also with the accents and um, he has a lot of variation there. Second part of this great line is that you actually see, it's a, it's a normal 16251 turnaround. I mean, that's great what the rhythm section is playing, but Cannonball, I don't think he's really thinking about that too much. He thinks about a D7, just five one, a very, the most basic progression uh, you can think of. And if you view it from that side, then he uh, he plays it, the E flat is that flat nine. He comes down with a few chromatics. Again, the E flat, an octave uh, down on the fourth beat. And then what is really cool is that he, continues with the D7 flat 9 ID on, on the first bar of, of his solo. He plays it like in an arpeggio down. And there he lands on the second bar of his solo. There he ends inside on a resolution of this uh, line. So he is kind of later in his in his timing, but also in his melodic resolution of this line. So that's what makes this lick so, so great. Phrasing is everything here. The melodic content is one thing, it's nice, but it wouldn't be half as impactful, on me at least. And I think, let me know, am I the only one that thinks this is probably the best pickup? Uh, ever in history. Well, that's a big claim, right? But I, I put it on loop, you know, on, on my transcribe program and I was just playing it for 15 minutes straight, these two or three bars, you know, to get the phrasing and I can try to get it as good as, as um, Cannonball. Listen to how he moves between the lines. <laughs> And then you, you hear how he, just in the last few notes, he locks in, you know, he swings so hard. But, and then I also love that freeze moment on the A in that first bar. You see, I made a transition. We, we are coming from the melody, it's a ballad. You see 16s because we have this half time feel, the ballad feel. And then we go in a double time feel uh, for the solo. So we are now changing from uh, 16 notes to eight notes, but uh, you can see that it's also notated on the sheet music, but it's actually the same, by the way. This might be a bit confusing in this leg of the week, but in context, I hope at least it makes sense. So I hope this was interesting. I don't know. For me, it's super interesting, but I hope you, <laughs> you got a little bit out of this and, um, have fun with this, try it out, Try really listen to it and, and try this for a moment. Try to sit on those notes and see if you can incorporate that into your playing. Because I'm not, you know, I won't copy this lick for this lick's purposes. I, I really like the idea of the phrasing and of the delayed resolution. That's what I take home at least. If you like this um, video, please leave a like and maybe a comment would love to hear from what you think about cannonball this tune stars fell on a ball ah. stars fell on alabama and make sure to subscribe if you haven't because there's tons of transcriptions and this kind of content and 
a lot more coming soon. Stay tuned, till next time.